Thank you very much. We're Tessa and Arianna Moroder from uh, Lotto Zero in Pranto, Italy. And we were a little worried because this is what our space looked like about five months ago. Now it's a lot worse. But then hearing that all the other labs are opening in these days made us relax. And we actually inv want to invite everybody to our opening on the 15th of October. We're going to have a big exhibition and a sleep concert that's going to go on for 12 hours. <laughs> so you can come visit us. So, okay, uh, we're in Prato, Italy. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have been there already. I'm pretty sure a lot of people know Prato very well. It's a historical textile district. It's a cluster, just like Huddersfield. There's over, over 5,000 companies working in the textile sector in the province of Prato, and it's all different kind of textile um, products, but it concentrates on wool, and especially regenerated wool. When we were looking at the district and when we were doing our market research to start our project, we realized that many of the companies that are active in the district are very small and so they don't really feel like, uh, they don't really feel the need to invest in um, inside um, design um, structure in a, in a design office, style office. And also we saw that bigger companies are not that interested because there's so much to do. They don't really have time to do the necessary research and the networking for uh, optimizing their design and their creativity. That's why we decided that Prato is the perfect place to create our center, which uh, opening in October will be a center for re design research and development in textiles. Um, we have a space. Um, to our space uh, belongs a um, fab lab for textiles, where we will have basically the setup of a textile workshop, but the mentality of a fab lab. So our concept is to bring designers and creatives from all over Europe and hopefully all over the world to Prato to get to know the district and to work with the companies of the district. Our idea is uh, to put together these two worlds, the know-how, and the uh, great history and heritage of the traditional industrial district and the knowledge, the um, uh, innovative ideas and the important, uh, on a global level, important ideas of designers from, from uh, centers of, uh, of Europe. Our idea is, is new because the district uh, where we will do our research is a sort of extension of what can be our fab lab. So we will invite uh, designers for residencies and for research periods and they can take uh, the spaces and the facilities and of course the knowledge in our headquarters but at the same time uh, go and work directly in the companies and apply the ideas to immediately to an industry context and to a realistic outcome. Um, the organization for the moment, it's me, Tessa, and Arianna. I'm an entrepreneur and I used to be a consultant. Arianna is a textile artist and a designer. What we're going to have, of course, this is going to evolve in time, but at the moment, serigraphy, laser cutting, dyeing facilities, knitting, sewing, etc. And like Arianna said, we do rely on the companies of the district to do other more technological things. Um, we, um, we, our um, offices are divided in textile lab, shared studio, and we also have a Kunsthalle, which is an art gallery. We concentrate on uh, art made with textiles and fabrics, which is not textile art, I would like to say. We work with the companies and also with some of the most important schools in Italy. And to our last uh, slide, what can we do or what do we want to do for TCBL? Well, um, of course, all of our services, so the creation and the maintenance of a creative network that we want to keep open and that any one of you, we hope, will want to access. Uh, one last thing is um, we've realized that just coming here in these days is that we would love to start a residency program, maybe a European project with all the other textile labs that are opening in the next day. Uh, Months, days, months. That's it. Um, I'm Ruth from TCOE, from the Design and Make Labs. Um, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about what we have to offer. I just feel it's a great place to start. It's steeped in history and as a proud community. We here at TCUE, VCOE value our history, however, just our heritage and tradition are the foundations on which we shape the future, combining these with new technologies and modern business practices.
We strive to underpin the links between education, innovation and industry. We are pleased to offer individuals and businesses somewhere to turn to, to discuss and realise their ideas. Through commitment, guidance and practical solutions, we give support and space to engage and grow. With our expert experience and access to our industrial machinery, we enable a spark of an idea to become a commercial reality. We encourage our users to think outside the box, to be passionate, brave, open and prepared to travel a road unfamiliar. For we appreciate and understand from experience that getting from A to B may not necessarily be in the order or route one might initially think. That often it is the things that spring from development and curiosity that prove to be the most successful or wonderful. Our design and make labs are managed by myself. I come direct from industry, keen to pass on my knowledge and experience, and can offer practical training from concept to development prototypes through to fit for production designs, as well as routes to market, pricing, etc. Utilising our links, local and nationally, with schools and educational establishments, plus our 100 member industry related companies, we offer customised support for users. It is a brilliant thing to be able to also now offer solutions and contacts from all our other TCBL partners and advise services and labs. We are at the forefront of innovation, committed to achieving sustainability and eco-friendly products and processes. I would like to add that the fundamentals of our model can be duplicated in, other, in, in any other of our TCBL partners' locations. Of course, the results will not be exactly the same, as each has its own surrounding specialisations, elements, ecosystem and local environment. Moreover, that is the beauty. I've already watched our network grow and continue to grow rapidly. This will certainly only gain momentum. If you watch the film during lunch, look now, or had a chance to look around the exhibition, um, look here, you will see that we have been lucky enough to already have worked, been able to work with some truly inspirational and talented designers and individuals. Therefore, we <laughs> we finally believe TCBL will, be, TCBL will become a long term practice with ever changing solutions, questions, and outcomes for it is an existing global movement, not just a project. We look forward to working with you. Hi, good afternoon to all. I'm here to present my company from Portugal, Ilio Textile. Uh, we are not a research center. We are a, a quite old textile company uh, I'm the um, R&D uh, manager, uh, the guy that uh, was uh, one and a half year ago challenged by the administration to open uh, research and development de uh, department of this company. For about 51 years, uh, we came from Portugal. We have a big uh, industrial area. 100 employers, uh, one turnover that is not too big, but is not also too small. Uh, our clients, because we are a, a textile ac accessory manufacturer, are uh, um, general in the textile, the fashion, home textile, professionals, uh, footwear, automobile. Okay, we produce uh, stuff to all these uh, industries. Um, our products are mainly uh, labels, heat transfers, ribbons, elastics, woven badges, promotional stuff, this kind of things. Okay, uh, about the market issues. Because we are, we are um, uh, a manufacturer of accessories, we, are, we have our management, our production management structure adapted to, to give very uh, rapid answers. Uh, because uh, we produce the accessories for, um, in this time, the textile is not oriented for big collections, it's oriented for the just-in-time production. So we have to, 
to have the possibility to give fast answers to help our clients technically developing its products um, and also to, to have the capacity to ensure a big quality pattern on our deliveries. Our, our market issues as more, we have more orders for natural fibers, um, asks for innovation, um, sophistication, safety, and also communication capabilities on our, uh, on our uh, accessories and, uh, and garments. In our no innovation potentials, because we, we are a textile accessory uh, manufacturer, uh, the strategy was to, okay, um, not, not to start doing uh, things that are very out of, uh, of uh, our ecosystem, out of what we know. Okay, very well these things. Okay, let's introduce technology on these things. And this why that we, we, we choose uh, these two main areas uh, to, to, to start researching um, the ways how to introduce technology. We, we, we work on the textile transfers and the printed electronics and the printed and the function, functionalization of the heat transfers because we look to the, to the heat transfer as a way to, to do some of the things that we talked earlier uh, on, this, on, this, uh, on this talk. Okay, we can have the flexibility to, to add functionalization to the clothes. Here there are some of the things that we tested on our lab last year. We work on printed electronics, we print antennas, we print sensors, we print capacitive sensors, and we have big success. Some of that results here are results obtained by measurements doing uh, in a local university, because also we, we, we started the interaction with the local universities, okay, and these are the characterization of the antennas. We do antennas because we have, we, we visit one university, we see the people try to do textile antennas, and okay, we take this challenge, to, to us, and we develop the, the antennas, take some designs, and we will deliver to him to, to test, and uh, they are very happy. Good afternoon, I'm from Davy Textiles in Bradford. We're a textile recycling company. We've been uh, originated in 1895. We are still operating out the our original mills, up in Dudley Hill in Bradford. We are family owned. Uh, we're currently overseen by our fourth generation of Davy family ownership. Um, over the last 120 years, we have lots of knowledge and expertise passed down the generation, working with a variety of wastes, fibers, and different processes. Our main applications for our recycled fibers are going to non-woven and spinning industries. Main waste markets are from Ballistic vest manufacturing, as you can see in the top left hand corner picture, we regularly recycling items like that. From weaving, so we have a Kevlar salvage in the middle top. Uh, rope manufacturing from non-woven felts some mill waste. So you can see there we have some short spools in the yarns, some larger ones, some rolls, so any kinds of waste. What I'm trying to show is that uh, we have experience in recycling a lot of different kinds of wastes. So the problems we've seen, textile recycling is just getting cheaper and cheaper to manufacture. And as I'm sure we've all heard, textile manufacturing is moving away from the UK. So hopefully we'll be able to bring it back together. So our main fibres we deal with are high performance fibres such as pyramid and metaramid, which we probably all know as Kevlar or Nomex or Twaran, for example. For those ones as a PBI, PBO, Priox, polyester and nylon, which is more associated with the fashion industry. Natural fibres, we generally work as a commission processor, so do wool, silk, cashmere and bamboo. We regularly precision cut tops and slivers. And our processes are just general recycling processes, which we do in Bradford. So you've got garneting, carding, opening, pulling, precision cutting. So moving forward, as we always have done, we have to react to new wastes which come available. 
trying to develop new markets, see what applications they can go into. Um, new fibers that might become available in the market, what's the next biggest thing, what can we recycle it into, how would we again develop it, and it's all about adapting to the processes. And just from the TCBL, I'd just like to offer our services. We're open to new ideas, new opportunities that might be out there, and ultimately just forming new relationships and how to move forward. So let's clarify. <laughs> let's clarify first. I speak on behalf not of one entrepreneur from Prato, but instead of a group of entrepreneurs from Prato. We call them associate entrepreneurs. They are our pilots, and they, are, they were the ones from the district, of the industrial district in Prato, who decided to apply for this uh, call that we made a couple of months ago. So they want to experiment with us. And these people are... Uh, very enthusiastic uh, entrepreneurs who managed to go through tough times and good times in the last 30 to 40 years. They are still alive, they are kicking, and they are doing quite well because in the last year they are recovering, mostly exporting to the extra EU market. They mostly produce textile. 70% of the industrial district in Prato is uh, uh, textile production, so they work on finishing and uh, uh, delivering fabrics to top brands like uh, Italian brands like Prada, but also international brands like Warbury, Armani, Gucci, Valentino, and so on. Now, why they're not here? Because as businessmen, these people are busy. And they are busy with the Pitti Uomo uh, fair, which uh, is... Uh, so, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a sustainability day uh, uh, with Hugo Boss and Zegna, at the Chamber of Commerce in Prato, and uh, we, so we, we found that these people are the big brands, the big names are more and more uh, uh, interested in sustainability. They are producing uh, sus sustainability reports like the one, uh, the picture is from one of these uh, documents, and uh, just as the big brands are increasingly in interested in becoming transparent as far as environment and social issues are concerned. So on their, on their turn, they ask their suppliers, like the Prato people, the Prato entrepreneurs, to do the same. And so there is a, a, a big compelling uh, requirement to be more and more environmental friendly. You can imagine, you can guess, that uh, out of the seven main values of the TCBL, which are openness, curiosity, ability, durability, multiplicity. One of the most uh, uh, important for the firms was sustainability. So, new con constraints are coming up, but uh, there is also uh, new campaigns going on around, and you have heard probably about the detox campaign, which started a few years ago and got the subscription from very big brands right away, and is increasingly successful on these days. Uh, and uh, the, our own firms are uh, coming closer to, to, the, to the issues of this campaign because uh, uh, some. 11 groups of chemicals are under scrutiny by the Greenpeace uh, uh, analysts. A big concern for env environmental issues among our pilots, our entrepreneurs, but on the other hand, uh, two weeks ago, one entrepreneur w uh, stood up in this big assembly speaking about sustainability and he said, we are like the body of a, a big butterfly where the wings are the chemical industry on one side and the clothing industry on the other side, we are in between and we are very small with uh, our little uh, a, a possibility to influence the change. So 20 seconds just to say that maybe TCBL could contribute to make it a bigger move. I've got this gut feeling Jesse was just talking about me. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Sketch based in Amsterdam. Uh, my name is Wouter, but let's try to use Walter today because it's more easy to pronounce. Um, and the last couple of hours, the last couple of days, we've been talking about innovation, about apparel manufacturing, about how to make your textiles, and so on and so on. And I think it's interesting to discuss with all of you how this very first step of creating a product, uh, to discuss how to find a suitable partner for your product, actually. 
as you can see on the picture, sometimes this can be a very difficult and time-consuming process. And I will tell you why. There's a mismatch I noticed almost a year ago when working with a lot of manufacturers from Asia, in China, Vietnam, and Myanmar, and they were looking for retailers and brands in Europe to work with. And the funny thing was, manufacturers were ba basically focusing on production, so they were thinking offline, while a lot of brands, they were thinking online. They were trying to sell the product, they were trying to, s to reach out to the consumer, and uh, trying to, to become more visible in this probably pretty much challenging industry. So there's a mismatch between supply and demand looking for each other, which I think in 2016 can, can be solved. So I was thinking, I'm not from the fashion industry, I've studied law, uh, starting as a lawyer and after a couple of months decided to set up my own business. So I was thinking, why isn't there a platform like Alibaba, but then focused on the European market to connect supply and demand based on what they're looking for? So for example, I'm looking for a shoe manufacturer. I've, uh, I've an order of 100 pieces per style and a total volume of 1,000 made of materials uh, like leather. Why isn't there a platform that shows me just that one in Portugal that I can work with, instead of going to Google and type in footwear manufacturer letter, which will probably show up about 100 hits or even more, and starting to email them without even knowing if it might be a relevant match. I think this can be done differently, and that's why we decided to, to found Sketch as the European online marketplace for clothing production. And by doing so, we want to do two things. We want to help manufacturers uh, improve their online visibility, their online presence, and by doing so, we help them to receive leads that might fit the service they provide. Well, on the other hand, we want to help fashion brands that are starting with small quantities, that don't have a sourcing uh, unit somewhere in Hong Kong or somewhere in Europe, to help them to find that perfect match 10 times faster without wasting a lot of money or time. So how it works. Manufacturers, they create a profile on sketch.co and they tell exactly what service they provide. Because brands, they start by creating a project and in that project they fill in everything the, pr the manufacturer needs to know to produce a product. It basically works like this, you create a, a blueprint for production, you talk about uh, the minimum orders, uh, the, the quantity per style, I mean, sorry, uh, the budget you have, the experience you have, if you already have a pattern, if you already have thought about the materials you want to use, and so on. And this practical information, we can easily connect by an algorithm to the manufacturers in our database that are able to actually offer that service. A manufacturer profile would look like this. They can show what kind of products they make, where they're based, where they, where they, who they would like to work with. Uh, in the near future, we would like to have reviews and testimonials of brands that already worked with the supplier from, let's say, Turkey or Italy or Portugal and so on. Another interesting question is, 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 is right for the, for the last, for last moment, because, as you can imagine, we are only with a team of six, probably from next week with seven, and we've got a very big dream. We want to make the European textile and clothing market more accessible, more easy to work with, and help them to start collaborating in a more efficient way. And that's something we cannot do alone with the six of us. We are looking for partners who are willing to maybe join Sketch, and in the other way around, Sketch joining TCBL. Okay, Cleviria is the name of my company. Of course, we are located in Prato. We are a software house in Tuscany, Italy. My name is Corrado De Castro, and uh, let's start uh, with uh, the, the main need uh, that we have the ambition to face or help our clients to face. The need of uh, lack of transparency and visibility along the supply chain. It's one of the um, burden, is one of the main topic and the main problem affecting the, the textile and clothing, um, and the clothing uh, enterprises. Uh, why? Because uh, if uh, you have your supply chain non transparent, you cannot uh, optimize the, process, the processes along the supply chain. You never know who are part of your supply chain in terms of first tires, second tires, suppliers, and so on. Risk management, if you don't know who are part of your supply chain is quite difficult to uh, analyze and understand where, from where the risk can come up. 
Sustainability. Remember that sustainability, this is a kind of misunderstanding that I heard many times during this year. Uh, transparency is not part of sustainability. Is sustainability part of transparency? Transparency is the main problem. Sustainability is just uh, some topics uh, about the triple bottom line environmental, social, and economics uh, that are part of the transparency. You have problems about sustainability, and at times you, you are not able to um, answer questions like uh, who makes your clothes, uh, um, when, where, uh, and how. That's the problem of sustainability. If your supply chain is not transparent, you cannot improve and you cannot advertise anything about your sustainability and about your supply chain. Uh, cost and impact. Uh, companies need to invest in a trained, selected, and valuable supply chain. It's not easy, uh, but it, this is the path. We cannot consider this like a cost, but just a long, middle, middle term uh, investment. Um, and it requires something that is absolutely important. Uh, um, it's a shift of management mentality. Um, to, be, um, uh, to face uh, the, the transparency, you need to instaur it, you need to create a collaboration with your suppliers. So it means to change something like a paradigm uh, between buyer and suppliers is partner. Yertela is a software web, is a multi-stakeholders network where uh, all the suppliers, uh, all the main stakeholders of the supply chain are involved and uh, the, where they act uh, and perform their activity of management or control in line with their roles and interacting according on the functions and the relationship established. Uh, how it works? Just as in app and Tela, register and assign roles and functions and tasks to the department on the corporate or cooperators. Create your network, define your link with companies according to their role in the, your supply chain. What it does? Task supported, develop and content, developed contents just to train your supply chain, just to set up protocols to spread over the world, engage and train stakeholders, plan and monitor activity in terms of monitoring the activity of your suppliers, and report and rate.